good evening everyone and i thank the organizers for inviting me for this talk so as an anesthesiologist we often get calls to put in iv cannula or a central venous access for difficult iv patients or a critically ill patient so won't it be nice if you can put an iv line fix it and forget it for the next 6 months or one year that's the relevance of today's topic that is long term venous access how to secure and maintain what exactly do you mean by long term any iv act line that we have to keep for more than 7 days that is long term in such a situation it's better that we put in a pick line that is peripherally inserted central catheter or a tunnel catheter or an implanted port a pick line is a subset of central venous catheter that is inserted peripherally and the tip is lying in the central vein the superior vena cava it's suitable for medium term use the ideal vein of choice for insertion is basilic vein that's because it's bigger in size than the nearby veins it's superficial it has a straightest course to its destination that is the superior vena cava and it has minimum number of valves next best choice is brachial vein but it's closer to the artery and the nerve and it's deeper it needs ultrasound for insertion and sometimes we put in the anticubital vein also but then due to frequent flexing of the elbows there's more chance of mechanical phlebitis or thrombosis ultrasound guidance is preferred for the insertion of all pick lines and when you put in the pick line the tip should lie in the lower one third of superior vena cava or most ideally at the junction of superior vena cava and right atrium at this point the dilution of whatever drug that you are giving that's maximum and there's least chance for thrombosis there are different types of pick lines the different sizes are 3 4 and 5 inches that's roughly 1 cm 1.1 mm 1.3 mm and 1.6 mm how do you choose the right size that depends on the catheter vein ratio the catheter should not occupy more than 45% of the cross section of the vein so if the vein size is roughly 3 we can put in a 4 french catheter if it's roughly 4 we can put in a 5 french catheter usually the basilic vein will be around 3 to 6 mm there are single lumen catheters two lumen and three lumen catheters if you are using a tpn that is total parenteral nutrition it's ideal to dedicate one lumen entirely for that so in that case you can use a multi lumen catheter then there are valve and non valve catheters non valve are open ended valve catheters has a valve at the distal end which prevents flow back of the blood into the catheter so there's less chance of occlusion when the patient has a uh, frequent cough or something like that the intrathoracic pressure is high and for the non valve catheters the chance of flow back into the catheter is small different materials are there and pick lines are usually meant for slow infusion of the drug if you want to inject a drug at a rate of more than 5 ml per second you have to use a separate type of pick that is power injectable power pick or power ports then about implanted ports this consists of a metal or plastic uh, chamber this is covered by a tight self sealing silicon diaphragm you use a needle to pierce the diaphragm when needed the chamber is connected to a catheter the other end of which lies in the central vein most usually a uh, uh, igv or subclavian vein is accessed and the everything is subcutaneous under the skin the port is under the skin and the catheter is also under the skin site of any puncture is also under the skin so hence there is an intact skin barrier which prevents infection so the chemo ports carry the lowest risk of infection and patient com comfort is maximum with ports because it allows the patient to resume a normal life it allows swimming and breathing the tunnel cuff catheters this also is a long line one end of which is inserted into a central line most usually subclavian or igv then this is channeled under the skin and is brought out at an exit site which is distant from the vein puncture site there is a dacron cuff near the exit site 
So there are two uses for this. One is that there's a tissue ingrowth into the cup and it anchors the uh, uh, catheter at this point. Another use is it prevents infection. It prevents by tracking of microorganisms along the outer surface of catheter into the vein. So tunnel cuff catheters can be used for weeks or months. The types are Hickman catheter, Rovia catheter, and permanent HD catheters. Why do we need long-term access? That is, when you need to give drugs for a long term, for example, antibiotics, antifungals, or chemotherapy, or total parenteral nutrition. The lines can be used for frequent blood sampling, or when the IV access is difficult, or for delivery of hyperosmolar drugs. How do you choose the right device? The longevity of the port is the highest. So if you think you need the venous access for more than one year, it's better to put in a chemo port. The, longev the longevity is medium for picks and tunnel, that is like weeks to six months. Insertion is the most difficult to put is the port because it's surgically inserted. Picks are minimally invasive. It's just a, like uh, a single prick into the IV. The tunnel catheters need tunneling. So uh, ports and tunnel catheters may need sedation in addition to local anesthesia. About the post-insertion maintenance, it's easiest for the port because after the wound heals, there's no dressing that's needed. It has to be flushed when not in use only once in four weeks. Whereas pick lines need weekly flushing and dressing. The tunnel catheters, after the initial part, there's no need of dressing, but it has to be uh, flushed weekly. The infection rate is least for ports that we have seen. About the insertion procedure, ultrasound guidance has many advantages like ease of insertion and it's safe and it avoids malposition. About the insertion, we'll see a short video. You have to do a pre-scan and identify the way in which you are going to put it in. Then mark this point of insertion from there, measure from the point of insertion to the right sternoclavicular joint and from there to the third intercostal space. That's the total length of the catheter that you are going to put it. Put a tunicate, use all sterile precautions, sterile drapes, gloves, uh, gown and everything. Use the tree. There you have marked the insertion site. Using the ultrasound to the very puncture. Then insert the guide wire. Remove the needle. Make a small incision at the vein puncture site, skin insertion site. Use the introducer dilator along with the healable sheath into the vein. Remove the guide wire. Remove the introducer and thread in the pick line. This you can do up to the measured, the distance that you have measured. Then after that, aspirate, check for backflow of blood and flush again. Then do a scan to rule out malposition. Check the IJV to see whether it has gone into the IJV. It has not gone in, in this video. And do check the subclavian and see the catheter in the subclavian. Seen as a bright dot. Then post procedure, you have to secure it. You can use the wings and suture it. You can also use suture less uh, stat locks. The chance of infection is lesser with stat locks. After that, you put a transparent dressing over the side. And you have to confirm the tip position. You can use a chest x-ray. And in the chest x-ray, the position of the tip should be below the carina. If it's below the carina, 
uh, it's in the lower one third of uh, SVC. It should be ideally two vertebral spaces below the carina. You can use an intracardiac ECG to confirm the fit position. That is uh, looking at the morphology of the P wave. This is the connection uh, to check for the intracardiac ECG. The guide, uh, guide wire or stillet is used. It's connected to the tip of the catheter and also to the red lead of the ECG and you flush the catheter. Now there's a continuous column of saline from the tip to the end. So we can get an ECG with that. So this is a normal ECG of the patient. This is a child under GA, that's why it is your toes there. Look at the morphology of the P wave. The P wave becomes suddenly becomes sharp and tall. That means the site is tip is at the junction of the uh, superior vena cava and now about complications. The procedural complications are injury to the artery, nerve, or the vessel. There might be a hematoma. If you insert it too much. It might cause arrhythmias. You just have to pull out the catheter a little bit. If there's erosion of the wall, there might be a cardiac tampering. It's an emergency. About the post-procedural complications, malposition is the commonest. It can go into uh, the IJV or the opposite side. It can be corrected initially if you are using ultrasound guidance. My subsequent migration, it might get pulled out or it might go in and cause catheter occlusion or extra vessation. Phlebitis may be mechanical, bacterial, or chemical. Uh, if it's chemical due to the skin prep and all, it, it, it can be treated with NSAIDs if it's mild. Infections are a dreaded complication. It may be local or systemic. It may be exit site infection, tunnel infection, or port pocket infection. If it's severe, it can cause sepsis. This is CRBSI, catheter related bloodstream infection. You do a culture and sensitivity and treat appropriately with antibiotics. Catheter removal is not always indicated. If the system, symptoms does not subside after 72 hours, you can consider catheter removal. Catheter related venous thrombosis is another complication. It may be asymptomatic or may present with swelling and venous dilatation. You may have to use anticoagulants or urokinase for that. Catheter occlusion. That is, you are unable to flush or there's no blood on return or aspiration. It may be non-thrombotic or thrombotic. Non-thrombotic, the reasons are the catheter abutting on the wall or a king, this can be corrected. Or if it's due to drug precipitation, you can use a guide wire. Or if it's thrombotic, you may have to use antibiotics. If there's a catheter occlusion, never used to Flush forcefully. Use a syringe which is more than 10 ml, 10 ml or more, because otherwise it might result in catheter fracture and embolization. For the care and maintenance, the general rules for the care is all healthcare personnel should be educated about how to follow a standard procedure. And if there's a dedicated nursing team for the care of the pick lines, that's better. And always use an aseptic non touch technique. The details you get in literature in nice guidelines. You have to inspect the catheter site, inspect the catheter for any clots or kings, and there should be a transparent dressing. About accessing the CVAD, always use a aseptic non-touch non technique. Strict hand hygiene has to be followed. Scrub the hub for 15 seconds and allow it to dry. Then check the patency, use only 10 ml syringe. If there is a resistance, do not inject with pressure. The dressing has to be changed every seven days. And about flushing, always aspirate first and then flush with saline. Before and after each use, you have to use the saline flush, administer the drug, then again flush with saline and then lock with heparin if needed. I stress the use of only 10 ml syringes. And if you are using blood, pro if you are using the line for blood sampling or blood transmission, use 20 ml saline for flushing. And always use a push post push technique. This is to create a turbulence so that the inside of the catheter is cleaned more effectively. 
care of quicklime when not in use, you have to change the dressing every week, flush and lock the catheter with a positive pressure, either with saline or with heparinized saline. For the care of ports, the sutures can be removed after seven to 10 days. For tunnel catheters, sutures have to be kept for three weeks. But after that, it does not require much maintenance except the flushing. For accessing the port, inspect the site, then clean the skin with chlorhexidin. The port is palpated with two fingers and fixed there and needle is inserted through the diaphragm. Then aspirate blood and flush with saline. Use the SASH method, that is saline, administer the drug, again saline and heparin. And access needle should be changed once in seven days. About removal of devices, if for some reason it has to be removed early, you always have to uh, rule out a thrombosis and never push, pull it out forcefully. Because if you pull it out, it might lead to catheter fracture and embolization or also thrombus dislodgement. So the take home message is always follow a safe insertion procedure. Proper care and maintenance is important using an aseptic non-touch technique. Always use SASH protocol for flushing and while removal, you have to be very careful. That's all. Thank you.